Hello, it's John Heaton, and now I'm going to do a review of Out of the Blue, Premier Low, which I've kind of been meaning to do for the last three years because it is among my top 20 albums. I think I put it in my top 20 when I did that video. And what prompted me to do this review right now is I picked, I've already got a couple of copies of this album, including one I bought at the time in early 78, not quite on release date because it came out in the fall of 77 but I bought my copy in maybe March of 78 and uh, I, I remember getting the lyrics and the poster and I was very happy. But there's one goodie in here which I'm going to show you which was not in my original and hence prompted me to buy this copy. <laughs> so I start off by sh well, I'll start off by showing you the cover. It's the ELO spaceship. Double album. And wonderful cover. And here's the gatefold. Kind of of its of its time, should we say? Same year as Star Wars. Uh, and then this poster came with it. And it's in very good condition here. Better condition than my original. Jeff Lynn at the top on guitar vocals. Bev Bevan on drums. Richard Tandy here on keyboards. Kelly Graukert, sadly no longer with us on bass. Mick Kaminsky on violin, and the two cellists at the bottom, Melvin Gale and Hugh McDowell. So that poster was always nice to have, and this is the follow-up to New World Record, by the way, which was a masterpiece. Is a masterpiece in my opinion. Had telephone line and Shangri La, and tightrope, and then the lyrics came in this format here. By the way, Jeff Lynn is kind of a bit dismissive of the production on this album and, and says he, he's improved on it with his versions of Mr. Blue Sky and Stepping Out. I'm not sure if that's the case actually, but he's entitled to his opinion. I think Stepping Out is a complete masterpiece on this album and it's hard to fault the production, so I'm not quite sure where Jeff is coming from on, on that front. Uh, this is on Jet Records, who released most of uh, ELO's big albums. And then the, the second album is the same in terms of lyrics, but the real surprise of this package is this spaceship, Make Your Own Spaceship, which is in pretty good condition. i to be really careful here. I'm not even sure if I knew this existed, or if I did, I've never seen it. Uh, it was not in my UK copy, as I said. And uh, I've never seen it in second-hand record shops in the 40 years that I've been into pop music. So when I saw it on Saturday, although this, this copy was not that cheap, I had to get it. <laughs> so this album, back to the album, well, I remember one review said uh, an overblown piece of work masquerading as something important or some garbage like that. I mean, people are jealous of Jeff Lynne because he's so talented, maybe. <laughs> well, certainly because he's so commercial. I saw it did well so commercially, hit single after hit single, and uh, hence attracted a bit of sniping from people, but totally unwarranted. Uh, this album is a uh, complete tour de force, it really is. Uh, almost every track is, is captivating and brilliant and melodic and driving and uplifting. Good, good album to play in the car, by the way. <laughs> so Turn to Stone was the first single and it opens the album in superb fashion. And the other thing to, no to note about this album is the backing vocals from Kelly Graukert. Which, and I guess Jeff Lynne contributed backing vocals as well. That kind of gets forgotten in ELO history, and one thinks of ELO as just being Jeff Lynne doing everything. But Kelly Graukert's uh, harmony backing vocals are an integral part of this album, and when you hear the same songs recorded on the recent uh, album that Jeff Lynne put out of ELO tracks, that, that aspect is slightly missing, in my opinion. But um, it's a great song, and it was a pretty successful single. And then It's Over, is next could have easily been a single again I mean as well as Turn to Stone but it wasn't and it, as such it's a superb album track with a brilliant melody and uh, 
ELO really did take over from where the Beatles left off after I Am The Walrus because they're taking brilliant melodies, using the orchestra, and John Lennon admitted to such as much as such uh, as much <laughs> in an interview that if you want Beatles, go listen to ELO. So, and I, that wasn't a put down, that was a compliment. Um, Sweet Talking Woman was another single off the album and very catchy, uh, very good driving beat, good uh, singing from Jeff Lynne and backing vocals. Cross the Border is a kind of rocky, rocky uh, rock and roll type number uh, with amusing lyrics about um, escaping across the border and uh, quite a nice song, not, not, probably not as strong as the other three on side one. And then side two opens very strongly with Night in the City and uh, this is quite an unusual track for ELO, they didn't really do tracks like like this, so this seems to be unique in their catalogue, I absolutely love it, great use of electric guitar, which is not unknown for ELO obviously, they, they used it on Do Ya and a few others, Mama Ma Bell, but uh, very, quite unusual for this album, maybe, uh, I love it, and great backing vocals, 747, just like they're from grade 11, and there's no turning back, it's just brilliant, Starlight is a gorgeous ballad, uh, with it, I think George Harrison remarked that ELO used synthesizers with tastefulness. Uh, so some bands could, could use synthesizers and to excess, particularly in the 80s maybe. And, uh, but ELO, I think he's right and I think I would agree that they used synthesizers, yes, but they used them uh, to great effect. And uh, they didn't forget, you know, the, the band, you know, the guitar and the, the bass and the drum. But synthesizers kind of complemented. The keyboard work of Richard Tandy was always outstanding for me alone. Um, so Starlight's a nice ballad. Jungle is a superb track, which literally sounds as if it was recorded in the jungle. I'm not sure how. I think this album was recorded in Munich or in Germany. I'm not sure how they got that jungle beat, but it's very effective and really adds to the, the atmosphere of the song. And Believe Me Now is a nice little short instrumental, which leads into Stepping Out, which is for my money, as good as Can't Get It Out Of My Head. It's up there with the, the top ELO ballads of all time, really brilliant. And then as if this album needs to get any better, <laughs> you turn over, you put on side three, and you get what's called Concerto for a Rainy Day. And this whole side is just mind blowing. It's a, it's a supreme achievement from Jeff Lynn, perhaps his greatest achievement ever. Because it starts off with Standing In The Rain, with the great instrumental passage and then the vocals coming in the strings the whole thing is just masterfully put together masterfully produced and it goes into this gorgeous ballad big wheels uh, which is just about as good as they get as well in terms of yellow ballads and summer and lightning is this very atmospheric song with a great section in the middle where it goes into a, just the drums only uh, very effective. And then Mr. Blue Sky Needs No Introduction, a huge hit single, very well known in the UK in particular, and played at the uh, Olympic ceremony of 2012 in London. Uh, it's a great song. Uh, maybe it would be nice if people talked about other ELO tracks, not just about this one, but I'm not complaining. I'm glad that it's well known, and I'm glad Jeff Lynne's got some recognition. Because uh, for quite a few years, ELO was a kind of untrendy band. Well, it wasn't even that trendy at the time to like, but uh, in latter years, uh, a bit like Supertramp, people kind of thought, well, yeah, that, that was, that's a bit dated, isn't it? But uh, I think people are now realising that ELO and Supertramp are two supreme bands, and uh, they're coming back more into favour now, I think. So Concerto for a Rainy Day, superb, takes up side three, and then we have Richard Tandy and his metallic voice saying please turn me over at the end and then we move so we turn over to side four and sweet is the night is another masterful opener so all four sides of this album start wonderfully and sweet is the night has a great melody and great words uh, about smoking your last cigarette and stuff uh, comb your hair the light that shines paints a trace of sadness on the street and I wait I can't seem to get to you. You start to sway, check your Cartier, because it's getting late, you can't afford to wait. So you move along where it's going on, 
and the people of the night are playing till the dawn, and the sun that shines paints a trace of sadness in your eyes that cry, wishing and hoping. Sweet, sweet is the night, where you are here. Dark, dark were the days, they disappear. It's just a brilliant song and quite, quite not well, not that well known outside the main fan base. The Whale is a very effective instrumental, uh, perhaps not the highlight of the album, but nice, nice use of the synthesizer again. Birmingham Blues does feature some nice electric guitar and a good solo from Jeff Lynne, showing off his versatility. Um, and then Wild West Hero, talk about top ELO ballads of all time, this is probably push comes to shove, it's in my top two or three ELO ballads. I just love it. I love the, uh, the sentiment behind it. Uh, I love the harmony vocals. Um, and I love the build up at the end and the, that singing from him on that last note, because it's not an easy note to hit. Uh, it's just so uplifting. And uh, it was a hit single, but not as huge as it should have been, perhaps, considering the quality of the song. But uh, anyway, this album is probably the commercial peak and artistically this and the previous one and Face the Music before are probably their three greatest albums but uh, push comes to shove this one probably gets the nod because it's a double album and uh, as you probably know from my channel I'm quite a fan of double albums because <laughs> you get twice as much music and they tend to be more adventurous. Okay, thank you for watching, see you next time.